I just wanted to make the comment about the possibility of maintenance therapy, yeah. right? That, that these biologics that are non-toxic, you could continue them for a little bit longer and that might change the microenvironment enough, whether it's inhibiting invasion, migration, whatever have you, maybe those floating tumor cells, yeah. microscopic tumor cells remain floating and don't That's get right. to lodge anywhere in an organ and don't ever make it to a metastasis, right. for example. And some of the pediatric diseases where they're metastatic on presentation, right, osteosarcoma, I mean, these may be important things to really look at. So, well, anyway, this has been, I think, extremely informative. And I, I think we've discussed several important scenarios in the management of soft tissue sarcomas. but. Before we end the discussion, I'd really like to get everyone's final thoughts from each of our panelists and, and you know, carte blanche here, whatever you'd like to talk about. So just give some advice or whatever you think. And, and maybe Mark will start with you and go down the line. And, uh... I'll avoid politics. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a complete honor to be sitting here with such great colleagues. And really, had we been here a year ago, it would have been a very different discussion. If we're here again next year, it's going to be a different discussion. It's a great time to be doing this. I think, I hope what comes out of this often is our passion for these patients and our passions for the disease. It's, it's often people, often you come to ask when you come to meetings and you say you treat sarcoma and people sort of look at you a little strange. Uh, it's a phenomenal disease to treat and it really always, it's an honor to be here. Yeah, thank you. I think if nothing else, we have emphasized to our audience that this is a very rare and a very complex group of tumors. There are a lot of nuances. This is not a resistant disease. There are lots of options. And please feel free to engage your local sarcoma consultant for the best care for your patient. Yeah, I agree. I hope we've also conveyed to the, the audience that there are standards in sarcoma. There does seem to be a lot of head nodding and a lot of people that are doing the same thing. Yeah. I think that we've also shown that there's a, a great collegiality. Um, uh, we are kind of nuts to go into this field, maybe. Uh, you know, and so it is hard, but we do hope that maybe something that works on a mesenchymal tumor will help EMT and, 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 and other things. We hope that we will be pioneers in the oncology community. I think we are already pioneers of caring from people from birth to the 90s, and I, and I think that we um, do collaborate across age ranges better than any other single discipline. And so. Um, I hope we've communicated that there is hope, that there are options, that there are standards, that there's collegiality, and um, uh, that it can be better than what you Google. Yep. Marty? And I would say that we almost don't realize how many times we use the word data and clinical trials. Almost everything that we've spoken about is data-driven decision-making. And those data come from clinical trials that involved hundreds of human beings who were personally facing the challenges of sarcoma. So we are indebted to all of those patients and the doctors that helped design those studies and enrolled patients on study. But the exciting thing is that the clinical trials worked in that we get information from them and that's why we can sit down for 90 minutes and really talk about what to do in a way that's not just spouting off you know, answers that seem plausible, but rather are really, you know, data-driven choices. I think it's really exciting. Yeah, thank you. George? And I think in 2016, we have to talk about where's immunotherapy and sarcomas. And I think, let me just summarize that, because at ASCO 2016, I think we're going to hear some pretty negative messages about the fact that it's not a home run yet, the way it is in Merkel cell, the way it is in melanoma, the way it looks in bladder. So that, to me, is not a bad thing. That just means we have much more work to do, and then sarcoma becomes a testing ground to make all sorts of immuno-oncology approaches better. We're going to need combinations. We may need new targets. But our field has struggled with that for a while, and, and all the drugs we've talked about are the product of that kind of research. Just like everybody said, our, our community is incredibly collaborative with each other. I think our patients are also quite collaborative with each other, and it makes for the ripe environment to have a lot more progress happen in the future. So thanks for moderating today. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And, and again, I'd, I'd like to kind of echo what Mark said, that I'm humbled to be you know, among such distinguished colleagues and friends. And uh, you know, you've really dedicated your life to this rare and difficult disease. And, and you really are shaping care for these patients. And I think we're sitting up here discussing these options because of all of your hard work and dedication as well. So thank you very much. Um, so really, on behalf of our panel, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And, and we hope that you found this peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. Thank you.